Hey guys, what is going on today? Bojo here, and we are back for our NHL 16 Be a GM following the Philadelphia Flyers here in year number six. We are two days from Z Trade deadline here in year number six. Your Flyers are at a very healthy record of 39, 18, and 4. First place in the Metro. Pretty much around the first place in the entire NHL with some games in hand on some other teams. But we are possibly looking to see if we can make any trades here at the trade deadline before we move into the final month and a half stretch before the playoffs do begin. So I wanted to get your guys' suggestions, and most of you guys were content with keeping the team as is, but your boy here wants to make a trade because I feel like I do not have some faith in Josh Manson. So I wanted to get a very reliable just defenseman for the next month and a half who I could actually have some faith in and hopefully to get the job done. Now, I was looking over those depth defensemen that that uh, we left off in the trading block last time. I wanted to see what teams suppliers were giving away. Ben Smith was going to be the guy I initially went after. As you guys can see, he's got great defensive stats as a two-way defender. Would have been nice on the top six rolls at 83 overall. But he's out with an injury, and I checked his uh, his injury out. I think it's like an MCL sprain. He's out till May, so we can't pick him up. Mike Green would also be a very suitable replacement for that as an offensive defenseman. He's got, his defensive stats are a little bit lackluster, though. I was looking for somebody a little bit more comparable as a defensive defenseman because that's what I need, like a two-way or a defensive defenseman to pick up where Robert Haig left off. So I was continuing to go through the teams here. And we got to the New York Rangers, and I was looking at Kevin Klein. Even though he is 36 years old, his defensive stats are still pretty fantastic. 83 for defense awareness, 86 for shot blocking, 86 for stick checking. Very good discipline, very good poise. You know, he's not going to be your offensive type player, but he's going to be that nice shutdown defensive defensive that you would need. Mark Stahl is going to be a little bit too much for me, as well as costing a little bit too much on a contract. Not going to spend 7 mil and not going to pay that much for Eric Stahl, there was nobody else really that great that I would need. Maybe Lucas Spiza would be another possibility there as a top six roll, 83, 87, 87. You know, that wouldn't be too bad. Could bring Lucas Spiza back to Philadelphia. How many years is on his contract? Four mil at one year. That wouldn't be bad, but just for a month rental, I don't think we need that. I think the I think the safe play would be would be to go to the New York Rangers. And just grab up Kevin Klein for very, very cheap. I mean, look at his trade value. It's almost like dirt cheap. So, pretty sure we can just send over like a very low level prospect that we're not using or some kind of uh, draft pick for Kevin Klein. So, I'm going to give up this Livingston guy. We'll give up Livingston and we'll also send the Rangers a draft pick as well. Send them a draft pick. Let's send them, uh, what year is this? 2025, 20, 2021. Let's send them a sixth round pick and Livingston in exchange for Kevin Klein. $4.3 million cap hit. That's going to hurt a little bit, but he's only on a one year deal. So I think the Rangers will be happy to get, uh, you know, a possible prospect and a, seven, a sixth round pick for Kevin Klein. We can send that to the Rangers. They're going to be cheering in the streets when that happens. But there we go. Just nothing wrong with picking up a nice, reliable defenseman like Kevin Klein for sure. So let's go to player meetings, I believe. Player morale. Because Kevin Klein will be inserted into our lineup almost immediately. Still in the overall. Glad to join the team. I'll make sure this trade looks good for you. I think we got a fair deal with that trade. So don't let me down. Welcome aboard. I think that was a trade that will leave both teams happy. Positive effect on Kevin Klein, which is good. It's on an upward trend now. And we can immediately put Kevin Klein into the lineup. So sorry about Josh Manson. But he can stay up here on the squad for right now. Because I think he has to pass their waivers if I want to say so. Let's see if I go to roster moves. Let's see if Manson would have to pass their waivers or not. Let's see. We go to defenseman, Josh Manson. He would have to go through waivers, yeah. So we'll keep him up here for right now. We can obviously let Kevin Klein go into the lineup where Josh Manson was, who's pretty much just a better defensive defenseman. In hindsight, he's a better defensive defenseman than Josh Manson was. Kevin Klein, substitute. Kevin Klein with Josh Manson, and once the playoffs are over, then we could willy-nilly send uh, 
Man, uh, Manson back down, but I'm happy to have Kevin Klein there as a right-handed skater, a right-handed stick player as well. That gives us some variety on our team in addition. So just a nice little depth roll pickup for us, and he'll help fill out the uh, top six role for the next month until Robert Hay comes back. So just a nice little depth pickup there. It didn't cost us much. A prospect we weren't going to use in a six-round pick, which is like, who cares? So we're really good to go here. We're in good shape. Hopefully Kevin Klein helps out for our team. And let's continue to go through the month of March. All right, so the trade deadline is here. I already made my one trade. Zach Smith is being placed on waivers. No need to claim him. As Kevin Klein is going to get morale for being dressed, we get a 6-5 to five shootout win over the St. Louis Blues in Klein's debut as a flyer. And we get a 3 to nothing shutout win in the next game following that. So Brian Strait is back to the lineup. He now will account against our roster. So now we got to actually send somebody down because we do have too many skaters under contract. So let's see. Uh, Strait would have to go through waivers as well as Kevin Klein. So thanks, Brian Strait, but I don't think I need you. I'll risk the waivers because, you know, your defensive stats are okay, I guess. Or who do I risk more? Do I risk Klein more or do I risk Manson? Let's see. Manson, 83, 84, 86. Straight's got the experience, though. He's the veteran. Yeah, let's send Manson back down. Let's see if he gets claimed. Uh, let's see. Waiver will be assigned every team. I'll have a chance to clear these moves. will result in your team being over the salary cap. Let's see. Josh Manson, send down. Uh, looks like I can't do that. I don't know why. Can I send straight down? Why can't I send straight down? very odd uh your roster must be compliant to continue what can you do okay this is weird do i have to send a forward down it's really bizarre uh can i send ben smith or james shepherd down what the heck why is it not letting me send it down what would you like to do make more roster moves what the piss do i have an extra i don't have an extra goalie up here do i no. Why can't I send those guys down? Because they're not waiver eligible? It's past the trade deadline, so I can't send them down. Muscular... Yeah, it's, it's just not letting me hit confirm. I don't know what the hell is up with that. Can't send Haig down. Injury players cannot be a part of roster transactions. Is that why a straight can't be down? No. I don't know what that means. Hold on. In the system. Oh, Chuck, let me just see something for a minute here. I don't know why this is up with this. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, I don't know. All right, let me just auto fix this for a minute. It's probably going to screw up everything. Auto fix rosters. All right, stop simulating. We got a win there. I think straight got sent down. Let me just see what that screwed up with. Hold on. Edit lines. Did it screw up anything over here? Yeah, it screwed up everything. All right, I got to go through all the line changes again, boys, so I'll be right back. All right, sorry about all that, guys. I don't know what happened. I had to change up my AHL and the NHL team back in order, so I don't know what the hell was up with that. Now I know why some people complain about the menus in this game. I don't know why it wasn't me allowing me to send a player down. I guess because he was in the lineup still, so that was screwing with it. I don't know, but in any case, we got that all handled under control. We can get back to simulating now. As we are on a nice little four game win streak I can see right here and we lose to the freaking Penguins if we switch our lines back to normal. But we do beat the Hawks which is nice and we got a lot of games this month. Let's see if we can get some wins on the wins under our belts here. We can't freaking beat the Pengos though. Shootout loss to Buffalo. That's alright. Get shut out by the Blue Jackets. We're up to 45 wins though which is nice. Five more and we will be at a 50 win season which is very nice. We haven't scouted the US at all. Oh, uh, let's see. I thought there was a really big, like, international presence this year. Yeah, the Sim League players have, like... Let's go to the SHL. Let's scout the forwards for six weeks in the SHL. Uh, 6 one, two. Okay, so we're losing some gains here. Morale is down a bit. All right, Shane, what do you got? I really feel like I'm firing on all cylinders. All right, good work. No effect. Ben Smith is getting disappointed in his ice time. I need you to go out there and give me no choice but to give you more minutes. Negative effect. Whatever, Ben. You're a depth player. You should be happy with the role you're in. Cornell. 
good. Thank you. We appreciate it. And then straight is gonna get negative affected. All right. So straight is definitely on a downward trend, which is you know not great, but not good either. All right. So we need a win here to get our situation under control here. All right. We're losing some gains here, boys. All right. So Robert Haig is back once again. Let's go to roster moves. We need to send a player down. Let's see if we can do this again. Josh Manson, you're going to get sent down. He'll be eligible for waivers. Let's see. I don't think anybody claimed him. No, they did not. So we're fine. That means Robert Haig will get back into the lineup. Whoops. Stop the simulating here because I wasn't done. We got a 5-2 to win over Washington. He's really unhappy right now because he's probably not in the lineup. I understand, Robert. You're very unhappy. I get it. I get it. We can scratch Kevin Klein. Let's go to Bachman, switch back with you, Klein. And then we go Robert Haig. Whoops. He's 80 overall now, but he's really unhappy. Jesus Christ, Robert. I don't know what the hell is your problem now. Why are you so unhappy? Why are you so unhappy? I don't understand. That is bizarre. All right. Well, we're going to leave him off the power play for right now. Actually, no, we need to get him back on the power play. He seems to be really unhappy with some things right now. I don't know why, but yeah. Haig needs to get back in here. Haig needs to get back in here. I don't know why he's so unhappy right now. That is really, really, really bizarre to say the least. Um, penalty kill, I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'll give him power play time, but I need to figure out why Robert Haig is so unhappy right now. Like, what the hell is going on? Why is he so unhappy? I don't get that. He went from like an 86 to an 85 to an 80. Like, you have no concerns. Clearly, you have a concern if you're disgruntled right now. I don't understand. You need to get your act together right now, bud. Uh, what were the standings at? Since we lost a lot of games in a row. Pittsburgh is catching up to us. Washington as well. So, come on, boys. We need to get some wins here. Come on. Simulate this game against Ottawa. Overtime loss. All right. We did beat Washington, though, which is nice. And we lose against the Rangers. It's not good, boys. It's not good. We are in a playoff spot. We did clinch a playoff spot, which is nice. But I have no idea what's up with this Flyers team right now. We got to go one game at a time now. And we went 3-1 to one over the Bruins. All right. That's a big win, though. Jersey. Need to beat these guys. 2-1 to one win over the Devils. That's good. That's good, good, good. Uh, we need a win over Tampa Bay. Shootout win over them. There we go. All right. Some players are going to be very upset with us. Obviously. Wayne Simmons. All right. Locker rooms are really place I'm enjoying lately. It's like a second family. I expect you to bleed by example, though. You're a leader. Positive effect. Good. As expected. Nobody in the NHL is unhappy, which is good. All right. Let's check the standings. All right. Pittsburgh seems to be still hot on their butts. Let's see what the standings are. We have 104 points with three games left. So that gives a possible six points for Pittsburgh. So as long as we get one point, we clinch the top seed in the Metro. Uh, we might clinch top seed in the East. Now Tampa looks like they're going to clinch top seed in the East. But as long as we get one point in our next three games, we automatically clinch the top spot and the number one seed in our bracket of the division. So... Let's do something game simulation. Why not for these last three games? All we need is one point over Toronto, New Jersey, or whoever the last team was. But here we go. First period against Toronto. Three to two. That's a crazy first. So Kruger gets a star, but then Boone Jenner, Nikita Korostelev, and Frederick Gauthier get th three past Michael Neuverth, and then Wayne Simmons gets one past Jonathan Bernier. 12 shots of nine. Not a good start for Nuvi. Second period, four to three, Timo Meyer, but then Gettinger. On Neuwirth again, so 4-3 to three lead for the Leafs. Third period is final as the Leafs beat the Flyers 4-3. to three. As I think we got Turbo act Mode activated. We did. What else could go wrong in today's GM mode? My goodness, Robert Haig gets freaking upset. All right, whatever. Simulate up to this day. Let's see what the Penguins got. Did they get a win? They got a regulation loss, so it does not matter now as we are... Clinching the top spot in the Metropolitan Division, nonetheless, doesn't matter since Pittsburgh lost. We get a 6-1 loss against New Jersey. 
and a three to nothing win over the Maple Leafs to end off the year. So we do get 50 wins on the year. 50, 26, and 6. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And we could go check out the entire league, see if everything ended off here. I think hopefully all the teams that play their 82 games. If not, close enough. Yep, all the teams that played 82 games, and we are good to go. Alright, so you can check out the stats for this year as we are the fourth best team in the NHL with 106 points. Edmonton with 108. Same thing as the Arizona Coyotes. And Philly with 106. So not too bad there. All right. Goals four per game. We really struggled down there at the half end of the season yet again for like the second year in a row. But our goals four per game is around 2.7-ish. So it's like middle of the pack-ish. Yeah, it's like middle low end of the pack, which... Not great, not good either. Not great, not bad either, I should say. Goals against, we're still, we're tied for the best goals against average team in the league. 2.34 with the Carolina Hurricanes. Not too bad there. Power play percentage, looks like it went up a bit to like 18%, so it's like middle of the pack. Yeah, it's middle of the pack-ish, kind of down low there, but still. Not too bad. And then penalty kill is up at a... 83.73%, which is good for six in the NHL. Not too bad. Time shorthanded. You know, he took a lot, bit more penalties this year, which is not great, but still, not too bad. Uh, let's see if we can find the Flyers here. We should have one of the better home records in the entire NHL, I would think. Uh, yeah, yeah, 38 and three at home, 20, 18 and three away, five, four and one record coming into the playoffs. Not great, but still, we had a nice little run there at the end to get us 50 wins on the year. Now, I'm very upset with Claude Giroux's point total right here. Only 74 points. He was on pace to have that point a game per player, and he did not get there. Which I'm a little bit underwhelming with Claude. Flyers seem to struggle at the back end of the year, and it looks like he might have struggled along with them. Didn't get the 30 goals. Jake Voracek didn't even get the 30 goals. That's really disappointing because he had 27 the last time we checked. So he went 20 games and only got one goal. That's really disappointing from Jacob Voracek, to say the least. He should have at least had 30 at least 35 40 goals on the air that's really underwhelming for Jacob Voracek to, for him to only still get one goal in the next 20 games that's really underwhelming 68 points for him Wayne Simmons with 58 Earl Grantham very good rookie year for him with 57 points 14 goals 43 assists was hoping for a little bit more goal scoring out of him but we'll take the 43 assists not too bad Tyler Toffoli with 56 points in the third line appreciate the year that Toffoli gave us for third line minutes Nathan Noel, 51 points for his pretty much like second year run with us. Last year he had 46. He had a lot more goals this year, which is nice to see. So he'll be growing, hopefully, into that top line player soon. Sean Couturier with only 34 points this year, but still not too bad. Timo Meyer with 33. Travis Konechny only with 28. Very underwhelming. Marcus Kruger with 22. Ryan White with 14. Murray Jenner's with a very good year from him. 12 points only, but he grew up to an 85 overall so far. Which is really great for a third, uh, second round pick, late second round pick for us. No, early second round pick, first overall pick in the second round. But still, nice job by him up to grow to an 85. Ben Smith had the one game, James Shepard had the one game. And then we move to our defenseman here. I don't know what's wrong with Robert Haig. I really don't. Why he's down at 80 overall, why he is a disgruntled person, doesn't make sense to me. Only maybe because you only had two points this year, Robert. Maybe that's why you're so freaking pissed off. Anyway. Ivan Provorov, 37 points. Pretty good year from him. I think that might be his best year yet, right? Uh, he had 40 last year, so he had a better year last year, but still. Roughly around the 40-point year. Ghost with 29. Sandheim with 24. Bachman with 7. Sam Moran with 6. Kevin Klein had 6 points in the game. Uh, 6 points total. Don't know how many he had with New York. I don't know why Robert Hag is so disgruntled right now. I do not know. His defensive stats are all the way down. He's up. He's down to an 80 overall. It doesn't make sense. Uh, he's 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 weird. He's a weird player. Very very weird player. I don't know why he's an 80 overall. Maybe that's why we're losing games. Somebody can explain that to me. I don't understand it. But Steve Mason 2.23, 43, 19, and five save percentage of 0.924. Michael Neuver 7 and 7, 2.38. Save percentage of 0.916. His save percentage went really well down. Mason did have seven shutouts on the air, which is really, really nice. Not too shabby. All right. Uh, yeah, let's check out all the team's players here really quickly. We just go to the entire NHL. 
entire league. Let's just take a look at the forwards here, see who had the most goals. And that is going to go to Alexander Ovechkin, 49, Tavares, any other names up there. This Bogdan Yakimov guy is pretty good for the Oilers. JVR on Florida now. Parise and Anaheim. <laughs> Some weird players there. Assists. Jonathan Huberto with 72 assists. That's pretty ridiculous. Reinhardt, Palat, McDavid. Karavainen's up there. Point totals. Who had the most points? Jonathan Huberto with 97 points. No 100 point getters this year. It's a little bit strange, but still. Drew is up there. He's up there with the low 70 guys. The mid 70 guys. Alright, so that's all for the forwards. Defensemen, let's see. Most goals by a defenseman went to Oliver Ekman-Larsen and P.K. Subban with 19 each. Leonard Manning, 18 goals. Madison Bowie. So you're getting some new names up there. Gustav Borman. Harvey Daly, Derek Pouliot. So some of the younger guys getting the goals now. Assists, OEL with 61. Shea Theodore up there as well. Drew Dowdy, Hayden Fleury. Dane DeKaiser with 38. That's pretty weird. Points, Oliver Ackman Larson should have won that with 80. Yep, pretty ridiculous from OEL. Uh, goaltenders, let's see, for the goalies. Who had the most wins in regards to games played. Scrivens, ridiculous Steve Mason up there as well. So Mason did have a good year. Um, goals against average, let's see. Goals against average in relation to games played. Jonathan Burney at 2.16, 70 games played. Mason's up there, 2.23 with 69 games played. So he's definitely up there. I'll give it to him. And then rookie skaters. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to look at shutouts. Who are the most shutouts? Shutouts went to... Uh, Jake Allen and Jack Campbell both had eight, but a lot of people had seven. Flory, Vasilevsky, Mason, Nadelkovich, and Dubinik. So Mason is up there. Mason was definitely one of the top goaltenders this year. It's nice to see. That's very nice to see. All right. Rookie skaters. Who had the most goals as a rookie this year? Wow. Sammy Heskinen. Or Heiskinen. 31 goals. Devin Jarvis. Benson. Packin Boudreau. Or Boudreau. Borman. Uh, Borman up there as well for a defenseman. 16 goals. He had a lot of points. Kalinin. Uh, Fritz. Kreisky. Estefan, Finneganov, Fellhaber, Earl Grantham is up there with 14 goals, so that's not bad. Assists, uh, Grantham was third in the league for rookies for assists, so that's not bad. I don't think he's going to be in any rookie of the year contentions. Well, he might be. Tyler Benson probably will get it because he had 72 points as part of the Buffalo Sabres. Borman as a defenseman, he'll be up there with 69 points. Uh, Heskinen at 30, was a 30 goal scorer, so he might be up there as well, but... Don't overlook Earl Grantham, 40 points here. This Berg guy, Ollie Berg, another rookie for the Predators. Might be up there as well, but Grantham did have himself a very good rookie year. And then rookie goaltenders. How many rookie goaltenders were there this year? Let's see. Wins. Uh, Stuart Skinner. Uh, not really great, very great rookie stats. No really, really good rookie goaltenders this year. So that's disappointing. But that is how it, how it plays out for this Flyers team. Robert Hag is disgruntled. I don't know why he is disgruntled, but we're going up against the Toronto Maple Leafs in round one of the playoffs. So we will have home ice advantage. We're going up against the Maple Leafs. This is, you know, I, I would have kind of faith in this team, but we're at 80 locker room chemistry right now. Some players are kind of struggling right now in their overalls. I don't know what is up with it. I don't know why Robert Hag is so disgruntled right now, why his overall is so low, but... Whatever the case, we have ourselves a pretty tough little matchup here going up against a Toronto Maple Leafs team that could be pretty hungry. As a Robert Haig is struggling as an 80 overall player. It doesn't make sense to me why he was so disgruntled. Because he missed one game he was disgruntled? Or because of the fact that he got two points this year? I don't know. Maybe Robert Haig is a guy we trade in the offseason or this these coming years because he's on that $5 million dollar yeah, he'll have a one-year deal, five mil next year, so we'll have to see what happens with him. If he's still going to be on a downward trend, you know, maybe he's a guy you trade eventually and maybe move somebody up. But for right now, hopefully our goaltending will keep ourselves balanced, but maybe some team meetings will boost Robert Haig up. Maybe we move Konechny down to the fourth line. Maybe we give Murray Jenner some time up here. 
up on the uh, third line to play with Couturier and Toffoli. Who knows? But we're going up against a tough Toronto Maple Leafs team that is, uh, you know, had some high scores for sure. Well, actually, I don't know. I thought I, I'm seeing some four. I, I saw. I keep thinking JVR, but he's not on the Leafs anymore. So we'll have to see uh, what the Toronto Maple Leafs have. But here is how the bracket does play out. In the West, you have Winnipeg against Dallas, St. Louis against LA, Edmonton against Anaheim, Arizona versus Minnesota. And in the East, Pittsburgh versus Washington, Philly versus Toronto, Florida versus Ottawa, Tampa Bay versus Carolina. But like I said, we do have home ice advantage in this first series up against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that'll be in the next video, guys. What should we do? I mean, give me some suggestions for edit lines. I have no idea. How are the Phantoms again? Phantoms are going to be in the playoffs as well. They might get a 50 win season as well. But still, looking pretty good down there. And uh, we're going to go into the year six playoffs yet again. High expectations for this Flyers team. Finishing with the best record in the Metro. Having home ice for at least, I think, the first two series. We need to at least make it to the Easter Conference Finals to consider it a successful year for us once again. But that journey will start next time around. So thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe as always. And I'll see you guys next time as we start our year six playoff run.